I was lucky to be raised by parents who had me in museums from early in life and just asked me what I felt about looking at different paintings, what it taught me about life and, and the human condition. Um, and that's really in keeping with what we've learned from the science of emotion, that our passions are really ways of looking at the world that teach us about justice and harm and loving and what it means to be part of a human community. We were interested in documenting the power of art to reliably evoke nuanced feelings like wonder and serenity and admiration. There are very few contexts in our everyday lives that allow us to experience such complex feelings together with each other at the same time. And I think that may speak to the incredible power of art to enable us to connect with each other and bond over these shared experiences. One of the questions in this new science of art and emotion is how many different emotions can visual art create in us as viewers? And with computational whiz Alan Cowan, my collaborator at UC Berkeley, we carried out a study that answers that question or begins to answer that question with Google Arts and Culture. We uh, took 1,300 people and we asked them to provide their emotional ratings to 1,500 pieces of visual art uh, that ranged across historical periods and genres. And then with new statistical techniques that Alan has pioneered, we created a map for you of what emotions does visual art produce. The map really interestingly portrays different relationships between the emotions. Uh, I really encourage you to explore the map and see how it aligns with how you feel about different paintings.